Good. Well, now, the, the theme of our meeting is Together in Community. And I want to read Psalm 133. It's a wonderful psalm. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. May God add blessing to the reading of that um, word. Now, Denise and I got together some time ago, and we thought about this Sunday, and the theme is together in community. So right throughout our meeting, we have people taking part, we have lovely songs to sing, and God will bless us here today. So let's um, begin by singing a great song, you know it so well, number 55 in our songbook praise my soul the king of heaven to his feet thy tribute bring ransomed healed restored forgiven who like thee his praise should sing praise him praise the everlasting king let's stand to sing Ever so well this morning, and uh, it's wonderful to praise the Lord. Let's read uh, together this last verse. Angels in the heights adore him. Ye behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him. Dwellers all in time and space. Praise him. Praise him, the God of grace. The last verse.
And the reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Thank you very much, Sheila. Well, when Denise and I uh, got together and thought about uh, this meeting this morning, we did come up with this theme together in community. And it's a great privilege to be able to uh, lead uh, a section uh, within the community. I'm responsible for the, the men's fellowship. And um, I've been the leader now for maybe 13 years, which is a long time. And uh, the Lord has blessed us in so many ways. Many of our members, unfortunately, or they have been promoted to glory. Um, they've left us. We've lost some members. But it's a great, um, it's a great pleasure. I don't know whether you are aware of all our groups, but we have youth and young people. We have our friendship circle on a Thursday. We have the men's fellowship, the ladies' fellowship. We have our musical groups. We have alpha courses. We have Bible study groups. We have the BH1 project. We have the Prams Care group. We have crafty ladies, and maybe there are many more groups uh, within our program. But you will agree with me that there have been great changes since the COVID uh, problem. The church has changed. So many changes within our Salvation Army. And the attendance figures for all our programs appear to have declined. We have lost people. They have drifted away from the fellowship. Lots of changes in our uniform wearing. No more bonnets, no more headgear, no collared tunics anymore. People seemingly don't want to wear dresses or suits uh, to worship anymore. We have changed tremendously. Everything is casual today. Uniformity has gone out of the window. We concentrate now on beards and tattoos. <laughs> I, I went to Scotland last weekend with the Household Troops Band, and I saw for the first time a young man with Salvation Army tattoos. And it was very interesting to talk to him about why he had decided to do that. Unbelievable changes are taking place within our world and within our community. But I hope you took notice of the Bible reading this morning. In verse 12, Paul speaks about the clothing that we should wear as Christians. And within our community and within all our groups, I believe that this should be the aim. 
And Paul speaks about how we should clothe ourselves. He said you should be clothed with compassion and kindness, gentleness and patience, forgiveness. Now I was in Scotland last weekend and we had a great congregation. And I went round speaking to the people at the concert and I said to this man, are you a Salvationist? He said, no, I used to be. I'm now a Baptist. But I left the Salvation Army because they would not forgive me. And I was very perplexed about that and I said to him, well, I'm very sorry and I certainly will pray God's blessing upon you. Forgiveness is a great quality and we should wear that within our community and within our worship. Then Paul speaks about love. Do you appreciate love this morning? It's wonderful to be in love. For 62 years, I've been married to a lovely lady called Doriel. And I know something about love and something about care and beauty and grace and joy and thanksgiving. Paul says that the word of God must dwell in you richly. I believe that the center of all our community work is the word of God. Do you read the Bible? Do you open the pages of the Bible and read them for yourself? We're grateful to those people who write our prayer matters. And Anwin has written them again for this month. And lovely words from the Word of God. How important it is that we should clothe ourselves in the Word of God. And at the center of all we do is the Word of God. The peace of God. It's wonderful, isn't it, to have the peace of God in our hearts. We live in a very beautiful town, don't we? I know we moan about the town center and we moan about lots of things, but we live in a beautiful town. And the lovely seafront and the ocean and the sand and the sky and the gardens and the flowers and the beauty how wonderful it is to find peace within this troubled world. Paul speaks about spiritual worship. Now our worship has changed. We don't have as many meetings as we used to. The meetings are different in content. But I'm glad that we are still fulfilling the ministry of singing and psalms, as Paul said to us, within our community, we must indeed sing hymns and worship God. You know, there are advantages of belonging to a core community. Belonging to this core gives us a support system. You know, there are many people in this core who live alone. There are many people who are aged. There are many people who are unwell. And I thank God for the support system that this core gives to so many people. And Paul speaks about it in this wonderful chapter, how that we should meet together. Paul speaks about it in this lovely letter. Supporting one another. And you know, when you are part of the community, there is a sense of belonging. It is good to belong to something, isn't it? I wonder how many uh, interests you have. You may be the member of another church. You may be the member of another group. You may be a member of a choir. I don't know. But belonging to something is a great advantage. 
And if you don't attend any of our community programs now, will you think about it? Because by belonging, you will receive so much blessing. I think belonging to a community group exposes us to new ideas. Do you like new ideas? I'm always trying to do new things. It's very important. You may get old, but it's important to do new things. Something new, getting out of the rut. Not the old, same old things every day. And Paul says that we should meet together. We should develop our spiritual experience. Do you know, I know people within this core whose weekly highlight is attending one of our groups. Now, Dorian and I were shopping in a, in a supermarket recently, and we were speaking to a man, and he said to me, I'm very grateful to the Prama group. I don't know too much about it, but he attends. And he said, it's wonderful. And he said, I get a lovely meal. He said, I really look forward to that experience. There are many people who thank God for our community groups. Paul, writing to the Hebrews in uh, chapter 10, verse 24, he says, consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together. Let's encourage one another. So my prayer is this morning that our community program will really develop, that more of you will begin to come together, invite your friends, invite your neighbours, and bring them along and come, as Paul says, meet together and encourage one another. The key to harmony and success within our core community is to be Christ-like in character and attitude one towards each other. You know, I've already mentioned Northern Ireland this morning, but those years I spent in Portadown in Ireland were very precious to me. When I was eight years of age, I remember the young people sergeant major of that corps taking me into her home and showing me pictures of Jesus. And she simply revealed to me the basics of Christianity. I thank God for that lady who was able to point me towards Jesus. Being productive in ministering the word of God to each other. Being motivated by a desire to please God in everything. Verse 17 of our reading this morning, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so I pray that the Lord will honour our community program and that we will see growth and development. As I conclude this message this morning, let me ask you a few personal questions. Are you compassionate in your love for Jesus? Do you know Jesus as your personal saviour? Do you experience the peace of Jesus? Do you read the Bible? Do you allow his teachings to rule your life? Do you attend God's house regularly to give thanks for all his divine blessings? Now, these are important questions to answer. And I believe that God is speaking here this morning to each one of us. And I pray that God will bless 
the ministry of this meeting. We're now going to sing a lovely song. To be like Jesus. Written by General John Larson. Beautiful words. This is my aim, my creed, to be like Jesus. And as always, our mercy seat is open if you want to come and kneel and pray here this morning. But let's sing prayerfully together. To be like Jesus. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Thank you.